everybody. Andy here. Welcome to Get Real with Andy. This is Blind Spots Part Two. So listen, just to recap a little bit, blind spots are things that we do that we're not aware of. A lot of times those things can be obvious to other people. For instance, here's some examples. Somebody is sad. You can see it on their face. But when you ask them, are you sad? They say, no, I'm not sad. Or if you ask them, are you angry? They say, no, I'm not angry. And they, they actually don't think they are or something. That's an obvious blind spot. Less obvious are sometimes when people, they have a more of an affinity towards women than they do to men. They'll be argumentative or defensive with men and, and not so with women. They'd be able to hear information from a female therapist or a female person, you know, in terms of feedback and not from a man. And they just don't see what they're doing. It's based on their own history of some gender thing, parental thing that they learned that they, it's so much part of their wiring that they just don't see it. That's why we call that a blind spot. Some other examples. Oh yeah, here's a good example. Pessimism, chronic pessimism is actually a blind spot because it's a learned phenomenon and somebody doesn't know that that isn't the way it is. It's just the way it is for them. That's also a good definition of a blind spot. And again, what do we get from blind spots? What we get is a sense of safety and protection, just like all defense mechanisms. That's it's not stupid to be protected. It's not stupid to be safe. But again, what is stupid is when we're unconscious about what we're doing and it's not actually really necessary in the present anymore. Blind spots become obvious when something in the present triggers some old network, some old synapse within us, some old pattern, and we find ourselves reacting in the same way. We think that it's it's just because that's the way the world is. That's just the way it is. But it's not. It's a blind spot. Blind spots are the crack, potentially, where the light can come in. That's a poem by Rumi. A crack in the soul is where the light can come in. That's our woundedness can be, that portal of entry into consciousness. When first confronted with blind spots, people are really reactive. I confronted somebody in the healing circle the other day, and I tell you, I was so benevolent. Everybody else could tell. I asked the group, do, do you think this person is being a little over-defensive and argumentative? And, and everybody raised their hand, and they just didn't see it. They thought I was being attacking and aggressive, and I was challenging them for sure, but I wasn't doing bad. And in my humble opinion, it really was what they needed. And even if I stir the pot and it's uncomfortable until they dive into it, you know, okay, that's my job. I don't have to be liked by everybody. You know, I prefer that. That's my story about blind spots. Um, I could easily write a book and call it blind spots because that, that's how fertile and how widespread the phenomena is. If you've ever been in relationship, you know how blind spots affect communication. Oh, my God. People can have the very same external experience, but the internal experience is completely subjective and different and tainted by our history and especially by our blind spots. Blind spots protect us from the charge, but that's where the charge is. So in the same way, as when a dentist wants to find out what's wrong with you, they will take a sharp object and poke. In the same way, a good therapist will take, you know, make some probing remarks. And then when it when it's there's an ouchie there, that's what's got the charge. And inevitably that's linked to a blind spot. And again, I said this before in part one, it takes a lot of love to help a person actually be conscious because a blind spot is self-protective and seems safe when really it's just playing it safe in some unconscious way all right so here's to truth consciousness and bliss love you <laughs>